What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I'm, of course, Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with Will Leahy, who is back. Ninja, it's it's great to be back. What a, what a weekend I had in Pittsburgh, and uh, what a weekend the Sox had in Pittsburgh. A little sweep. I uh, I bought this, a Drunken Impulse by, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to wear it ever. It looks absolutely hideous, so uh, I'll, I'll wear it here so it gets some use. It's so. Ken to Colby, no freaking way. <laughs> And remember, before we get into that baseball, hit subscribe. You're not going to want to miss all these daily videos. We do them for you, so help us out. We're going to start with our whip around the league. I'm going to start with Josh Winkowski, who had one strikeout in three and a third innings, giving up one run. He had this painted fastball. He faced Martin Perez, who's actually really good yesterday, with seven strikeouts and four innings. He gave up four runs, but his stuff played better than that. And this elevated fastball. This painted fastball, this nasty changeup, and these cutters, including this perfectly painted backdoor cutter, which I really appreciate. Cole Irvin had two Ks in six and two thirds innings, giving up no runs. One of his Ks was on this two seamer down the middle, which isn't really sexy, but you get what you get. I don't know what to feature. He had two Ks. He was really good, though. He faced Seth Lugo, who had one K in five and a third innings, giving up four runs, and had this 3,381 RPM curveball. Casey Mize had four Ks in six scoreless innings. He had this 97-mile-an-hour heater, this curveball, and wicked splitter. And he outdueled Louis Varland, who had two Ks in two and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs. He had this fastball. Aaron Nola had seven Ks in eight innings, giving up two runs. He had these two seamers, including this one that ran 19 inches back door. He had these cutters and, of course, his beautiful knuckle curves. He faced Nick Nestrini who had three Ks in three innings, giving up five earned runs and had these sliders. Slade Ciccone had three Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. He had this changeup and slider. And he faced Jordan Hicks, who had no Ks in five innings, giving up only one run. But since he had no Ks, I don't know what to feature. We'll feature Will's hat again. <laughs> Darius Vines had two Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. He had these nasty changeups. Faced Michael Lorenzen, who had seven Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and this fastball changeup and these cutters. Emerson Hancock had four Ks in six innings, giving up one earned run, and his fastball and changeup looked solid. He faced Peter Lambert, who had five Ks in three innings, giving up six runs, and had this changeup and slider. Chris Bassett had four Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two earned runs, and had these cutters and beautiful slow curveball. And he faced Joe Musgrove, who had three Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs, and had this elevated fastball and this slider. Mitchell Parker was outstanding yesterday with eight strikeouts in seven innings, giving up no runs. And everybody, throw your hands in the air if you're about to K Altuve and you're done. He had these splitters, curveballs, and here's a breakdown of his pitches yesterday. He was pretty nasty. He faced Hunter Brown, who had six Ks in four innings, giving up three runs, had the slider and cutters. Luis Heel had nine Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up no earned runs and two hits. He had these upper 90s fastballs, these wicked sliders, and he just looked really good. We're going to have to come up with a new nickname for him, the Gila Monster. And here's the Gila Monster K-Strut. And also... He had this ball called on him, and I want everyone out there to find something they get fired up about each day, like umpires get fired up about balks. Look at this. He faced Aaron Savali, who had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up five runs. He had this two-seamer and curveball for a sword, and I love this sequence with Aaron Judge at the plate. He throws this sweeper off the plate that Judge clearly takes. He sees this as a non-competitive pitch and then follows the sweeper up with a beautifully tunneled backdoor two-seamer. You can see why Judge took this pitch. Even though Judge is slumping, I get it, but this is a nasty combination. Jose Soriano was outstanding yesterday with seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up no earned runs, and everybody pay attention to this guy. Not only does he throw flames, he's averaging 99.4 miles an hour on his fastball this year, but... Look at these splitters and knuckle curves. Yes, this is a 95 mile an hour splitter. You heard me, 95 miles an hour on a splitter and another 94 mile an hour splitter. Pay attention to him. If, you, if he's available in any of your leagues, pick him up. 
He's available in K props, which he always will be. Pick him. This man is nasty. You heard it here first. Do not sleep on him. As long as his command's there, he's really good. He faced Frankie Montas, who had a short outing because he got smoked by this comebacker. Hope he's okay. Tanner Bybee had eight Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs, and had this painted fastball and these wicked change-ups and slider. Thought his stuff looked really solid. He faced Ross Stripling, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball and change-up. Edward Cabrera had seven Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, but his stuff was filthy. Check out these wicked curveballs and then these turbo change-ups. Yes, that's a change-up at 94 miles an hour. Don't know what this world is coming to. We have 95-mile-an-hour splitters. We have 94-mile-an-hour change-ups. Holy f***ing sh Not only that, but Edward Cabrera's change-up was about 5 miles an hour faster than Kyle Hendricks, his opponent's best bolt this game. Kyle Hendricks had 5 Ks in 4 innings, giving up 4 runs, and lowered his ERA this year to 12. He had this curveball, duck, and then these cut change-ups that were nasty, but the results were also kind of nasty. Well, and also, I think he improved because just look at how savage he is on this K. I mean, don't show your opponents up. They're going <laughs> to they're gonna get back at you. George Kirby was really good yesterday with seven strikeouts and five scoreless innings, giving up an uncharacteristic one walk. And I say uncharacteristic because check this stat out. In the last 100 years, there's no pitcher in baseball who's thrown over 300 innings that has a lower walk rate than George Kirby. Yes, Greg Maddox, you could suck it. <laughs> Kirby had this splitter, but the biggest thing was him painting with fastballs. Look at this dude. He doesn't miss his spot. It's absolutely ridiculous. He paints so well that Rembrandt would be jealous. And even when he's not trying to be in the zone, he is perfect. Look at him hit this target like a freaking dart. Great stuff from George Kirby. Looks like he's fully back. He faced Cal Quantrill, who had four Ks and six scoreless innings, and had this two-seamer and splitter. And Ninja, that game actually brings us our dime of the day, and it's for this walk-off jack by Jacob Stallings here Double that uh, I'm actually getting word here that they called it not a home run. It's a non dong in the day, but clearly we just got blind umps here, and I don't know who the bigger loser is here, Ninja. The umps for having the incorrect call or this guy missing this this ball right into his mitt. And because he dropped it, that's the only reason I believe that the call was overturned because if he caught it, it's just a clear, it was a clear home run. And the, the guy butchered it. What do you think, Ninja? I think if you have a dong taken away, we should call it the eunuch. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> wow, well, we have a eunuch of the day here and uh, <laughs> we're counting it here, Jacob. Boy, I will say the, the Rockies fortunately did win this game and Stallings with the, uh, the man on second base and extras rule, he got the game tying run, so. And, and that eunuch thing is just a joke, man. Didn't mean it, we're all cool. Sonny Gray was freaking fantastic yesterday. He had 12 strikeouts in six and a third innings, give it up two runs. He had these wicked sweepers and sliders Painted with his fastballs. I mean, look at this two seamers over and over just painting with them. Here's an overlay of his 94 mile an hour fastball and this slider. And you can see why hitters swing at this stuff. Sonny Gray, fantastic outing. This man has been on fire. He's one of my favorite pitchers to watch too because he's a tunneling machine. He faced Colin Ray, who had three Ks and five scoreless innings. His stuff wasn't that sexy. He had this fastball and elevated fastball but it got the job done. Adrian Hauser had three Ks in four innings, giving up eight runs. He had this painted fastball and slider, and he faced yesterday's pitcher of the day, probably the filthiest pitcher of the day. I'm going to give him a tie with Sonny Gray. I can't diss Sonny Gray. Tyler Glass now. Tyler Glass now had 10 strikeouts in eight scoreless innings, giving up seven hits, but no walks. He had these fastballs and these hammer curveballs, as well as these wicked sliders. This man is an absolute filth machine. The only thing he did wrong yesterday was he was a little premature on this K-strut. We've all been there before, Ninja. Hi Kudos to Angel Hernandez for getting this call right. <laughs> Tyler did follow this up with a pitch in the same spot and got the swing and miss. To show how Tyler Glass now gets it done, here are a bunch of overlays. 
Your overlays with his fastball and curveball, and you see how well he tunnels these things. And then his fastball and slider, also really well tunneled. Glasnow's philosophy is basically throw his best stuff almost down the middle of the plate. And no, he's not going to be down the middle because everybody's got some error. But if you throw it all down the middle, you let your pitch grips do the work, the stuff becomes filthy, especially with that tunneling and his extension because he's six foot freaking eight. The other thing is why a four seam fastball and curveball tunnel really well is because their spins tend to be opposites and it's very tough for a hitter to pick it up, as you can see in this graphic. Now on my filthiest relievers, Brian Hudson was painting with both his sweeper and cutter. Araldis Chapman had this filthy splitter. Fernando Cruz had this wicked splitter. He seems to be here every day. Gabe Spire had these wicked sliders. Michael Kopech had this gas and painted with 101. Justin Lawrence had these wicked sweepers. And David Robertson had this cutter. In college, actually, I just want to give a shout out to Gerangelo Sinjin, who had this 98 mile an hour fastball righty and a 91 mile an hour fastball lefty. And really, we should allow him to be cloned and do this at the same time. Do we see him in the bigs in a couple of years, Ninja? I mean, if he's throwing 98, 99 from the right side and occasionally mixes in something lefty, I think so. Yeah, like I think this is this is absolutely major league stuff. My top five filthiest pitches of the day. At number five, I have Edward Cabrera's turbo changeup at 94 miles an hour. At number four, I have Jose Soriano's 95 mile an hour splitter. Get that shit out of here. At number three, Sonny Gray's breaking balls. At number two, Tyler Glasnow's hammer curve balls. And at number one, we have Aaron Bummer with this ridiculous Bohemian Rhapsody sweeper. Mama. He just killed a man. And if you look closely, you can see his soul disappear into the heavens. His name is actually perfect for this pitch because if I'm a hitter, this is a real bummer. <laughs> Wind up on your ass. And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. I'm going to borrow this from John Boy Media because I thought this was hilarious. And I hope this was a typo. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Dylan Cease for 7Ks or more, then take Jared Jones for 7Ks or more, and top it off with Carlos Rodon for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 